Good morning, beloveds. I'm leaning in. You can you can see him. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was going to come with me this morning because he was splayed out on top of the bureau, and then here he is. And I, I can't decide if I'm awake or not. It's my rest day, so I got I got to sleep in, and I woke up at quarter to four this morning with the storm just absolutely raising, raging outside, uh, which was interesting, and then went right back to sleep. And then I woke up at 7.10, and I thought, I can lay here for 20 minutes and woke up an hour later. <laughs> so um, I'm a little behind this morning, but it's all good. It looks like it's going to be a gorgeous day out there. Uh, everything is nice and damp, which means the humidity should be good and high, so my hair will be nice and fluffy. And, um, but the sun is out. So, are you just going to stand there? Okay. All right. Uh, it is April 21st. Our author is F. Bernadette Turner. This was published in Aspire from August of 1975. And this is the, uh, from the Divine Science Federation international so let's see what f bernadette turner has to say okay the eternal now the kingdom of god is at hand we need not wait to achieve eternal life for we are in the midst of it now we need not pass through the curtain called death to reach the happy land we need but capture the wonderful now the challenging now and live it hopefully gratefully and courageously Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high holy place. And that is Isaiah 57, 50, 15. Let us reside in the high and holy place, in the consciousness of the omnipresence, and face each day with a joyful heart, while eternity unfolds before us like a river, continuing on endlessly. Through self-discipline and patience, we will abide in the presence of our Lord. Today may be likened unto putty in our hands. May we shape it according to thy will, Spirit, and make it a thing of beauty. Today is the eternal now. May this day bring us increased understanding of the unchanging nature of good, which is the definition of eternity, and may and God saw the light that it that it was good. God saw everything that it made, and behold, it was very good. That is Genesis four, thirty one. Okay. <laughs> um. I was. Uh, I don't even know what spiked the conversation. We were out on. We may have even been on the bikes. We were talking about something. And one of the things that I, I was talking about was um, class the classes that I took while I was in ministerial school. And just because not I didn't need the class and they were no longer going to offer the class. It was literally the last, last time they were going to offer it. Um, but Dr. Amit Goswami offered a class on reincarnation. And I was like, I got to see what this is because Dr. Amit Goswami is from India. You want to talk about reincarnation? Go to India, because that's what they talk about. Um, and so I was like, I really want to take this class. And it was an interesting class. And one of the things that, uh, one of the images that that has stayed in my consciousness from that is that our life is like a string of pearls. And our life is is not the pearls those are our lifetimes. Our life is the thread that runs through the pearls. And I think that that may be likened unto what Miss Turner is trying to tell us is that our, that our, the eternal life is now. The, the eternal life is now. We, our spirit, and, and many of these writers have, have tried to point this out. It's like, the eternal life doesn't start when we pass from this material vehicle. Our eternal life already exists and we're living it now. Uh, we are just, you know, currently in a, this particular mortal vehicle, 
a little bit limited. And because of that limitation, we've forgotten that we already live in the kingdom of heaven. We already live in the kingdom of God because it's all God. Um, the, the circle V, when you look at the circle V from science of mind, one of the things about it is that it is indicative of spirit coming into material form. And then the other half of the V is spirit going back out of material form. And that is because nothing is permanent except change. <laughs> Nothing is permanent. So we are constantly coming into this material form and, and going out of the, this material form. But the life is the thread that runs between the little pearls that make up our lifetime. So this particular pearl looks like this. And when we take her advice, which she says to live... Um, hopefully, gratefully, and courageously, we're going to make the most of this life and, you know, recognizing the eternal now. Because she, she's got a lot of quotes in here. The kingdom of God is at hand. We need not wait to achieve eternal life for we, in, we are in the midst of it. It's like, it's not something that happens at the end of our life. It's now. What choices would you make if you knew that you were going to live forever. We'll make them now. <laughs> That's what she's saying. You're in the midst of your eternal life. Make those choices now. Don't wait to the end of your life. The end of this life. The end of this vehicle. Uh, we need not pass through the curtain called death to reach the happy land. We need but capture the wonderful now, the challenging now, and live it hopefully, gratefully, and courageously. Um, so then she has the quote from Isaiah and then she says, let us reside in the high holy place in the consciousness of the omnipresence. And that's why we talk about heaven is a state of mind. Heaven is a state of consciousness. You know, this material form is not going to go to heaven because it already is in heaven because heaven is a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. And that's what she says. Live in the consciousness of the omnipresence. Face each day with a joyful heart while eternity unfolds before us like a river continuing on endlessly. And then she said, and then she says, through self-discipline and patience, we will abide in the presence. Okay. So yeah, self-discipline and patience. Mm, patience is a virtue. It's not one of mine. Self-discipline. I've got a fair amount of patience. Mm, well, it is something that I do practice. And I'd never pray for it because then God just gives me more opportunities to practice it. Uh, and I like that she says, today may be likened to putty in our hands. We get to make of this life what we will. That's what that free will is about. Make of your life what you will. May we shape it according to thy will. May we shape it according to the qualities of God. May we shape it according to the qualities of spirit. May we shape it according to the qualities that we wish to embody because we already have them within us. We just got to live them. We got to activate them. I said it yesterday. Thoughts and prayers mean nothing without action. That's what she's talking about. Your life is putty in your hands. What are you going to do with it? Uh, may, uh, and make it a thing of beauty. May this day bring in, bring us increased understanding of the unchanging nature of good, which according to her is the definition of eternity. Okay. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it is to live the eternal now, hopefully, gratefully and courageously. And maybe that's part of the reason why the name of this book is Courage, Conviction, and Consciousness. Because that's what we are called to live this lifetime in the eternal now. To recognize that we are living in the good. That we are surrounded by the good. That we are a part of the good.
and live in the eternal now. Live in the presence of your God. Because the truth is that you always are in the presence of God. And if that doesn't rock you back on your heels, you're not paying attention. So, oh, occasionally I hear people say things and I want to look at them and go, would you say that in the face of Jesus? I don't, but I want to. And occasionally I say that to myself, would I say that in the presence of Jesus? You know? And then I think about it and then I make a new decision. So, and that's the good news. You can always make a new choice. Uh, one of the things that I love about science of mind is if nothing else, we want you to know that you're always a choice. Sometimes the only choice you have is how you feel about a situation, but you know what? It's a place to start. All right. Um, so you have your mission today. Live in the eternal now. Hopefully, courageously, gratefully. The other mission that I give you every day is the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Uh, and some days that looks like taking a rest day and sleeping in a little bit and enjoying a more quiet morning. Uh, and some days it looks like cuddling with your... Uh, fur babies. And some days it looks like having coffee with a good friend and having, or dinner with a good friend or a group of friends and having a good conversation. Uh, it does look like taking a deep breath before you speak, especially when you go to speak to yourself. Um, you will speak to nobody as much as you speak to yourself. Why not speak to yourself kindly, compassionately, and lovingly? In fact, please speak to yourself kindly, compassionately, and lovingly. And if you find that you're not, make a new choice. Uh, it also looks like taking a walk. It looks like taking a nap. It looks like taking a break. It looks like listening to good music that makes you, that, that makes, that makes the hair on your arm stand up and your spine tingle. Uh, it is absolutely about self-care. I'm a big believer in self-care. I, it was, you know, it, it was like the big overarching lesson in ministerial school. They taught, they taught us a lot. They taught us a lot of skills and a lot of helpful things. And one of the things that they were big, big, big in, if you are going to live a life of service, you must take care of yourself first. You cannot pour from an empty cup. So take care of yourself. Okay. It, I also want to remind you because one of my suggestions was to eat dessert first. Uh, what I've come to realize is that is, while true, I do occasionally eat dessert first, uh, it is also a metaphor to make room for joy. No matter what is going on in your life, you deserve joy. So I encourage you to take care of yourself and to um, make room for joy. It's a quality of God. You deserve joy. And you are joy and you can have joy. So make room for joy. Your life is a special occasion. Uh, while we do live in the eternal now, we may only come this way once. There are many other places. Ernest, Ernest was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not coming back here. I'm done. I, I'm going to go see what the next life is and, and go live it somewhere else. I'm not coming back here. Uh, so that was, that was, you know, okay, Ernest. Um, we may only come this way once. So eat the good stuff, drink the good stuff, wear the nice clothes, go and do. What what choice would you make if you knew that you lived in the kingdom of God now? Make that choice now. All right. Okay. Uh, the rest of my suggestions, self-care suggestions, do something to engage your mind and your body, please. Uh, please drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Your brain works better when it is well hydrated. Do get early in your day bright light. What I'm talking about is called a circadian rhythm. It is a hormone cycle. It is 
it's a normal hormone cycle for this vehicle that we live in and all living things have that natural hormone cycle. So that early in the day, bright light stimulates that and you will have more energy during the day and sleep better at night. If you get that early in your day, bright light, if sunlight is great and I'm talking like 10 minutes, uh, but if the sun is not shining, which it is today, you can always use artificial light. So bright light early in your day. Okay. It's science. You can look it up. And then I would also remind you my Ernest Holmes quote, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. That is what, uh, Miss Turner was talking about. F Bernadette Turner was talking about. We live in the eternal now. We live in the kingdom of good. We live in the kingdom of God. We live in the presence of God all the time. It's up to us to be conscious of it because heaven is a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. So when we throw open the windows of our soul and recognize that omnipresence around us, when we look into each other's eyes and see God looking back at us, when we look at all of the, the livingness around us, you know, like even this, this is the presence of God in my life. And then we can always take him as, as advice. Look for the good and praise him. I want to remind you, once you learn to create heaven for yourself, once you learn to create that mindset for yourself, that state of consciousness, it absolutely is a superpower because nobody can take it away from you. And heaven ceases to be a place and can become any place. And that, that, that is a superpower because it means no matter what is going on around you, you know who you are, you know where you are, and you know what you can do, right? Oh, I wish you could hear this just very gentle purr. Ugh. You want to talk heaven? That, the, 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 the sound and the feeling of a purr, mm. they're the, my two favorite sounds in the entire world. A cat purr and a baby laugh. You need to, if you need to make your life a little bit better, Google baby laughing, babies laughing. That will change your, that will change your mind, your mindset quicker than anything else. There is nothing like the sound of a baby laugh. Just like there's nothing like the sound and the feel of a purr. So, all right, right, right. Okay, so uh, I'm at the social media part. Oh, did I remind you? Take him as advice. Look for the good and praise it. I mean, this is part of my good right here. <laughs> look for the good and praise it. So um, the social media, we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I am the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. We do try and put up enlightening content, uh, lighthearted content, good content, uh, funny content. We all need to laugh every now and again. I like to laugh. It's one of my favorite things. Um so avail yourself of that. There's great stuff on the YouTube channels. Uh, I've been working really hard on mine to catch up, mostly because this book's been fun and I want to get go ahead and get it started on the YouTube channel. Um, and our Soul Session playlist, we are extremely proud of our Soul Session playlist. There's all kinds of great stuff. And we just added a new one that's really good. So uh, Dr. J. Thomas Smith. So please go check out the Soul Session on the, on the YouTube channel, the Creative Life Spiritual YouTube channel. Okay. I think I'm at the part where I can remind you, no, oh yeah, to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a grateful day, a courageous day, a, what was the other word she said? To live courageously, gratefully. Hopefully, a hopeful day. A hopeful day, a grateful day, a courageous day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a divine spark, a brilliant light. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are a godling in whom God is well pleased, well represented. That is the truth of your being. And I encourage you to know that. 
I encourage you to make regular trips to the source of your own being and know the source of your own being. I, I mentioned Amit Goswami, his, his idea from the quantum doctor of the bliss body, God's idea of you. Go get to know that. That's what spiritual practice is about. So, all right, beloveds. Whew. I'm going to remind you that uh, Reverend David will be on Facebook Live, Creative Life Spirituals on our Facebook Live around 5 p.m. I will be back around 9 a.m. Um, I think today is Friday. That means tomorrow is Saturday. I get to go to the park tomorrow. Yay. Okay. Um, so I'll be, I, I will have hopefully squirrel and blue jay stories for you. <laughs> Uh, so take care of yourself, know that you are loved, and I will see you next time.